Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you several SEO best practices using a real life example. So just follow my process and you'll be able to dominate Google in 2023. Let's dive right in. So the first best practice is to use the reverse keyword strategy. Here's how to do it. Okay, so the reverse keyword strategy is actually quite simple, but it's really, really powerful. And the reason is because most people, when they try to do keyword research and they're trying to grow their organic traffic, they tend to focus on informational keywords because those usually have the highest search volume. And this isn't necessarily a problem. It's just, it's not the correct order that you should be doing this. It's not the correct order that we should be building out our keyword strategy. So what I like to do is I like to start at the bottom of the funnel here and I like to work my way up. And so instead of starting up here at the top of the funnel, we start right down here. And the reason for that is because we wanna focus on these transactional or investigative keywords first and then build our entire strategy around that. So what you're looking at here is an example for a business that actually sells pans for cooking. And so it's actually called the always pan. And what, what I'm doing here is I identified keywords at each stage of the searcher journey. So at the bottom of the funnel here, we have where to buy the always pan. So this is a very transactional keyword and it has transactional intent. So when someone searches this, they're very close to actually making a buying decision. So we really want to attack this keyword right away. And I'll be showing you what the SERP results in Google look like depending on the intent. And we'll talk about that in a second. But for now, what we like to do is like to build our whole strategy around these bottom of the funnel keywords. So we have this transactional keyword here, and then we go further up the funnel. And now we're looking at always pan versus caraway. And so this is what is considered a keyword that has comparison intent. These are also really valuable because if you can rank for this, you can steer that searcher away from the competitor and ultimately steer it towards your product that you're trying to sell. So then once we've gotten out of the transactional and comparison phase of this process, then we're gonna go further up the funnel. Now we're gonna be looking at more investigative keywords. And usually these types of keywords like pans for cooking fish or best pans for cooking fish, these are not, when a searcher is searching for these, they're not usually brand aware. So they're looking for the best pan for their unique situation. So what we wanna do is usually give them a list post that shows all the best pans. And of course, if, if I'm always pan, I'm gonna put mine at the top and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna compare and contrast all these different pans relative to the pan that we offer. So what we're doing here is when we rank for this, we're gonna be able to push that searcher further down into the funnel. Now, this may happen as soon as they land on the site, they read an article about the best pans for cooking fish, and then they end up buying the always pan. That's a perfect scenario. But in a lot of cases, they may see that there's a bunch of brands here and they'll go right back to search and they'll perform a search like this because they found out, okay, I have the always pan and I have the caraway pan, so I have to decide which one I want. So we're just making sure that we're showing up at each stage of this buyer cycle. And then lastly, at the top of the funnel, which you'll have your keywords that have the highest volume, you're going to be able to build a lot more awareness here at the top of the funnel. You're going to see stuff like how to cook sheep's head fish. And so what I would do is I would really be focusing on building topical authority in this one little spot, which is how to cook fish. Okay. And I want to rank for all the different methods of cooking fish and the different types of fish. And that way I can drive all of these searchers that are really at the top of the funnel, they're they're starting to become a little bit aware of this particular topic. I'm gonna to push them down into this part of the journey. So this all happens in a pretty logical way. It's not gonna be this straightforward all the time. Like the way searchers interact, the way that they make buying decisions can be quite erratic. But when we're building out a strategy, we always wanna start down here and then work our way up. And so I'll be showing you what this looks like from the perspective of Google here in a second. Okay, so now it's time to actually find some keyword opportunities. Now that you know that we start at the bottom of the funnel and we work our way up, the best place to start is actually with your existing keyword profile. So I always start with the keywords that we're already ranking for. This is really, really important because we don't wanna go and start targeting new keywords when we are already sitting on a gold mine of opportunity. So what I like to do is I immediately start to look for those bottom of the funnel keywords. And what you can do is you can just use little modifiers to find those. So I just go right into this keyword section and then you can search anything that typically will have bottom of the funnel intent. So we may just look at buy, which is gonna be transactional intent, and we'll see what comes up, okay? And that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to filter through and find these transactional opportunities. So right away, where to buy always pan, 
buy always pan. So now we're finding all kinds of stuff. Buy, best place to buy pots and pans, so a little bit broader, probably a little more towards the middle top of the funnel. But still, we wanna be looking at these various things. Best place to buy cookware. So once again, these are, these are technically not transactional keywords because it doesn't include the actual brand, but there is a little bit of ambiguity on that. But regardless, we wanna attack these keywords that do have this buyer intent right away. These, this, this will be the focus right away. So, and then if you wanna get more specific, we can of course filter this and just look at keywords that have really low keyword difficulty. And then you can prioritize even further. So instead of just targeting those that have a particular intent, we also target those that have good intent, plus they're super low competition. So we can really get a lot of traction and a lot of results very fast. So this is typically what I'm trying to do. So that's the first phase is trying to find these transactional opportunities. Then we're gonna start to look at those comparison queries. So look at versus and we'll see what we come up with and hopefully there's some good ones. So right away we have caraway versus our place, roasting pan versus baking sheet, which is more informational, but ultimately you wanna to try to find those comparison keywords. So really what I wanna look for is caraway versus our place or anything versus our place. That's That would be that comparison part of the funnel. Now, there's a bunch of other stuff here that's more informational in nature. So saucepan versus frying pan, this is still gonna be a very useful keyword to rank for because then once again, we can push them further down into the funnel. Stock pot versus Dutch oven, same situation. So this is the way that I like to conduct keyword research is start at that bottom, my work my way up. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go over here and put two to 15 in the positions and these we're gonna look at those low hanging fruit keywords. So go ahead and apply and we're gonna do show results. And what we wanna look for here are these keywords that are ranking in these very important positions from two to 15, because we can easily push these up with just a little bit of optimization, maybe upgrading the pages a little bit more, whatever it may take to push those forward. But these are your best keywords. So I'm not only looking at two through 15, but I'm also looking at keywords from that are super low competition. So only up to KD 10. So we can obviously push this up to 30 and we'll get a much broader amount of keywords to go after. But at the end of the day, if you're working with clients or this is your own business, you should target stuff where you can get quick wins right away. You don't wanna to have to wait six to eight months to get results. We wanna to try to get results in the fastest way possible. So this is why we need to be looking at these keywords that are we're already doing pretty decently for, right? So we have like this one here, mini plates, okay? It has a KD of zero and it has 600 searches. So we could definitely, this is sitting number four, we could push this up to number two, maybe even number one with just a little bit of optimization, maybe a little upgrading of the page and then maybe some link acquisition or we need to build more topical authority which we'll be talking about here soon. But this is my process that I go through when I'm looking through keywords. Now, if I wanted to find more informational keywords, it's actually quite easy. So we would just take this off and then what I would do is I'd actually go into here and I would start to search the modifiers that would make a keyword to be more informational. So this would be how we see what we find with that. So we'll just look just at how to queries and right away, we're gonna find a bunch of great opportunities. So we'll actually filter these out. We'll only look at two plus. So we don't see anything that's already ranking well. And we'll scroll down and we'll see, we got all kinds of stuff right here. So how to make a walnut cutting board, how to clean the always pan. So this is a good one. This is, this is, actually outside of the funnel because this is probably for someone who already owns an always pan, but it's still important because that could actually lead to another sale. We could sell another product to them. So we definitely want to be ranking for that. Looking at some of these other things, how to use a griddle press, how to clean burnt always pan. Once again, another one related to the brand, how to poach an egg in an egg poacher. Definitely something you want to rank for because we actually, they actually sell an egg poacher. Okay. So this is what we need to do, and this is how we need to think about it, is these informational keywords to support those bottom of the funnel keywords. And so, like I mentioned, we wanna start at the bottom of the funnel, work our way up, but then once we've really tackled the bottom of the funnel, all of our efforts should be spent on building topical authority for around each of these individual products. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is actually how to steal keywords from the top competitors. So just go to competing domains and you're gonna find all of the competitors that you're competing against. And what you wanna do is look for keywords unique to competitors. So I like to sort by this, because then I can really see the opportunity that we can go for. And there are gonna be specific competitors that are gonna have just 
that actually sell the products that you're selling. However, we do want to look at the competitors that are ranking for a lot of keywords because we're trying to get as much reach as possible. We should really look at what the potential is. So I would take these top top websites here, put them into here and just see what we're working with. Now, just be careful not to put websites that are pretty broad, but this one is the kitchen, so it's gonna be very relevant. This one's the minimalist baker, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that one too. And then we'll see if there's anything here that looks relatively relevant. Uh, Sir La Table, we'll take that one. So you may have to do a lot of different things to, to get a good keyword footprint that's relevant, but just mess around with this. So do show keywords. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna look at all the keywords that the competitors are ranking for, but, but your website is not ranking for. So what we can do is right away find all kinds of opportunities that we're just not ranking for at all. So what I would do is I'd actually sort this so I can only see keywords that are ranking in this lower KD range. And then we would also change the volume. So we would wanna do from, we could do from 500, just so we can sort through this a little bit faster. And then what I wanna do is I just wanna see, are there opportunities to build more content to support our existing keywords, okay? So of course, not everything's gonna be relevant here, but if we think about even something like this, like Pomodoro sauce, you could have an asset that shows someone how to create Pomodoro sauce using the pan that you sell, right? So there, this is how you can start to integrate those informational keywords with the actual product or offer that you have. And so this is really important because your competitors are already giving you a blueprint for the exact keywords that you should be targeting to build more topical authority, build more topical relevance. So once again, focus on your existing keywords, start at the bottom of the funnel, work your way up and prioritize the bottom of the funnel before you prioritize the top of the funnel. And then go and extract keyword opportunities from your competitors just by using this content gap. And you're gonna be way ahead of most people just by doing those two parts alone. So the next SEO best practice is to become obsessed with search intent. Okay, so now I'm gonna walk you through the search results for each keyword at each stage of the funnel. And this is important to see because you're gonna see that each of these keywords is gonna display a totally different makeup in these search results. So. More often than not, when you see these informational keywords, how to, what is, anything that's related like that, you're gonna see a lot of informational blocks that show up on Google. And so one thing you'll notice is, and one thing you gotta really watch out for is when you see a video block like this. And basically what that's telling you is that based on Google's data, they know that when people search this particular keyword phrase that they typically want to watch a video. They don't usually just want to read an article about it. They'd rather go to YouTube and watch a video. So that's why Google will prioritize video content in this example. And so this is important to know because if you're going to be building out a strategy and you want to rank for this in Google, well, the best thing to do is actually to rank for this in YouTube. That's the best thing to do because you rank in YouTube then you're gonna actually show up in Google. And so if you do that the right way, you're actually gonna get way bigger benefit than actually ranking in Google with the traditional page. So with that said, you should try to do both, right? So you should prioritize creating video content for this keyword, and then also create a dedicated page on your website to also rank for it. So looking at this, we see the video block, we have a people also ask section. So this is important because when you build out a page around this particular keyword, we're also gonna to wanna to build out topically relevant assets to support that keyword as well. And so this is exactly what you should be looking at. And so is sheep's head good to fry? Is sheep's head delicious? These are questions we should be answering. And whether you decide to answer those questions on the post itself, or you create a separate asset for it, that's what you'll have to figure out. But regardless, the, Google is telling you that these are relevant to that query, so you need to tackle them one way or another. And so then we go through here and we just need to see what types of assets are ranking. So based on this, we're seeing that it's mainly, there's some step-by-step -step guidance on how to do it, but there's also some recipes. So. The formula here is gonna be pretty simple. You're gonna create a dedicated page that shows exactly step-by-step -step how, to, how to actually cook this type of fish. And then you probably give a recipe or two that is gonna be super good for this type of fish. That's it, don't, don't overcomplicate it. Just make it unique, make it high quality. And then on top of it, make sure that you would create a video to stack on top of this so you can get the most bang for your buck. The second thing here is 
best pans for cooking fish. So now we're getting further into the funnel. Now we're getting more into that investigative phase. And you'll notice that the search results are starting to change, right? So now we're starting to see the big ad block, big ad block pushing us down because these advertisers want to show up for these queries because it's very relevant to what they sell. So right away, we know that this has more investigative intent, possibly even more transactional intent. So now we scroll down. First thing we see is that we have two back-to-back -back featured snippets. And so the most obvious solution to this is that we need to steal these featured snippets. So we need to structure our page similar to these competitors so that we can actually steal these positions. And it's not super difficult usually. So structure it the same way, build something that's better, more in depth, and ultimately you'll probably need to acquire more links. Now, looking at this, as we go down, once again, another people also ask section, use this to your advantage create additional supporting content. And then go down here, what we're seeing here is a common trend with this particular keyword and, and, and actually common for this type of keyword, which is anything related to best that's gonna lead to these list posts, okay? You're, this is the most common framework for this type of keyword. So it makes sense that you're gonna see a bunch of list posts and you're probably gonna need to also create a list post if you wanna rank for this at the end of the day. I mean, clearly that's what works. Every single one of these is a list post, okay? So you're gonna need to do the same thing. And then also you're gonna wanna leverage some structured markup and have some recipes in your content as well because Google is showing this recipe block that is gonna be largely based on structured data. So a lot of opportunity here, but once again, model the framework that's working here, but then when you create that content, just make sure it, it delivers something unique and different than what the competitors have already done. The next one here is further down into the funnel, which is always pan versus caraway. So this is that comparison query. Now we're really starting to get in the good stuff where we can actually start to make some solid sales. Our conversion rates will be higher if we rank for this. So looking at this, there's a few ways to attack these keywords and I don't wanna get you know too technical, but the first thing you can do is just you know build this out on your own website, okay? It's the most obvious one. But if you wanna to start to get really tricky, you can actually reach out to bloggers and have them create these assets as well. And then of course, you know, if you're the one that sponsored that post, they're gonna prioritize your product over the competitors. And so this is the one technique you can do and then you obviously would drive up the authority of those assets. And then you could actually flood the whole first page with your asset and then all of your partners that you've worked with to actually build out these assets as well. So that's what I would be focused on. And then once again, looking at the people also asked to look for opportunities to continually build more topical authority. Now, the final one here, which is the best keyword that you absolutely should rank for, which is where to buy the always pan. So you really wanna dominate this and you don't want your potential customers trying to figure out where to buy your product. Make it clear as day for them. Answer every question related to your brand. You should be ranking for anything related to your brand. Like that should be just hands down the easiest thing to rank for. And as you can tell here, Nordstrom is actually beating their brand for their keywords, which is not what we want at all. We need to be ranking number one for our primary keyword, which is where to, all, where to buy the always pan, but then also all of these supporting assets we need to be ranking for as well, these supporting keywords. So as you can tell, the differences between these keywords is very clear as you go down the funnel. The, the search results change and you need to use the search results to guide how you actually structure that content. The third SEO best practice is to upgrade before you optimize. Okay, so the best way to explain this concept of upgrading before you optimize is just through a simple example. So this post here on Gotcha SEO is targeting a very, very small keyword, which is SEO benchmarks. And so it's very specific to the SEO industry. It doesn't have a ton of volume. It's not incredibly competitive, but just to demonstrate this example so you could see, because this one, this particular post, and I'll be showing you what it looked like, was very old. I think I published it originally in 2015 or so. And you can see here from the traffic graph, you're gonna see it, you know, it didn't do super great. And then it finally picked up a little bit of steam and then slowly had this fall painful decline. And so I've seen this countless times for all kinds of assets, hundreds and hundreds of assets that we've rebuilt. And when you start to see this slow, painful decline, you don't need to think that you've been penalized or you've done something horribly wrong. It's usually just because the page has just become really stale and it needs to be refreshed. It needs to be updated. It needs more 
more new content on it so that we can get Google to recrawl and re-index that page. And so one of the best things you can do for these assets that have just slowly fallen off is just completely refresh them, completely upgrade them. And don't even really think about the optimization part until you've done that. So what we did here is that's exactly what, what we did. So I'll show you here what that, what that post used to look like versus what it looks like now. Okay, so here's what you're looking at. You're looking at on the left-hand side, you're looking at the original asset that was published in 2015, and it did not get a single update until 2022. So if I show you this content, it's fine at best. It's not great. It's not my best work by any means. But if we look at this, you know, it gives it gives what the searcher is looking for. So it did perform decently at that time. But my my methods for creating content have gotten a lot better over that period of a time. And we're talking almost six years difference between where I was here and where I am now. And I've gotten a little bit better at creating content to say the least. So you can tell here that this just needed to be upgraded. And there's a few reasons. First of all, I talk about organic traffic and I talk about Google Analytics. And obviously Google Analytics is going through a huge update, which is for the GA4 version of Google Analytics. So what I did is I, I took this asset and I completely started from scratch. I took everything out, started from the ver started from the ground up and rebuilt it with the new methods and understanding that I have about content. And so you can tell, very different, very, very different. Now, I, instead of doing 12, I actually only did six. So I actually reduced the number to focus more on higher quality. And what you're gonna see here is updating the graphics, the copy is completely different, and we're gonna to start to see that we have much better visuals to represent what we're talking about here. So in this one, there was barely any visuals at all. This one is much more visually rich but it's also updated. So now we have graphics from GA4. These are updated with the new version of Google Analytics. And we go down here and you can tell this is just a much better, more actionable asset relative to this one. And so this is what we do when we think about trying to refresh a page. We actually refresh it. We actually upgrade it and make it completely better. And this is one of the biggest misconceptions is people think that like once you have created an asset for Google, like you shouldn't touch it at all. This is a huge mistake. We're always shifting assets. We're always changing assets when they're not performing the way that they should. If you're not ranking where you should, then something needs to change. And usually adjusting the content does have huge impacts. Now, I'm the first to tell you that building links is the thing that you should do. But before you even acquire links, you need to make sure that the page itself is actually even worth linking to. And so this asset here, and actually the former asset, I never felt that this was super linkable. So I never even tried to acquire links to it because I just, it was just, you know, I was trying to hit a certain cadence, trying to publish content on a weekly basis. So this was not, not great work. But this one here, I wanted to create it with the intention of it trying to be so good and actionable that people would link to it naturally, or I could use it to actually, as a part of my promotion, to acquire links doing outreach. And so you can tell that this is much better. So we'll go ahead and look at the results. But as you can tell, just by doing that upgrade and doing a little bit of promotion, the performance is starting to climb again. So we took a dead asset. I mean, this thing was dead in the water. We refreshed it. We did not change the URL. Sometimes we will change the URL, by the way. But in this case, we didn't need to because the intent was still on point. We republished it with the new current date. And as you can tell, the performance is going in the direction that we want. So done this hundreds and hundreds of times and it works when you do it the right way. So once again, think about upgrading before you optimize for keywords that have, especially keywords that are like this, that basically are pages that have fallen off over time because of just being outdated, not being as good as it once was, maybe not even satisfying the intent that it once did. You know, sometimes a keyword intent can change and maybe at one time your page was doing the job, but because the intent changed, now Google has taken you out of the results. So that means you need to refine your strategy, refine your content strategy altogether. So upgrade before you optimize. The next SEO best practice is to create SEO content the right way. Okay, so when you're thinking about creating SEO content that will actually rank, the first thing you need to think about is first, how can I create content that will have a moat around it? So what does that mean? Well, in short, what you wanna do is you wanna think about what type of content can you create that's gonna have a unique angle that's gonna be different and better than what's already ranking? So the best thing you can do is go right into Google and look at what's already ranking. So in this case, I'm gonna show you an example. So keyword research services, I'll copy this, 
and we'll go ahead and see what's currently ranking. So we'll just open the SERPs and you'll see obviously Gotcha SEO is ranking, but what I wanna show you are the other pages that are ranking. So when I originally built this asset, what I did is I looked at the top results here and I said, what, what is going on in these results and what is kind of the trend? What are the types of pages that are ranking? And so based on what I saw, pretty much just saw a bunch of businesses that are selling keyword research services. So of course, I could have maybe created a service myself and create a service page and maybe it would have done okay, but I knew to really be able to rank long term, I needed to come with an angle that would be very unique relative to what's already ranking. So this is where people get a little tripped up. They think that when you analyze the results and you want to satisfy the intent appropriately, they think you should just copy what's on the first page, which is actually a huge mistake. You can satisfy the intent of a keyword without copying the exact content model that the competitors have. So in this case, I only saw that there was one competitor here who had a list post about the best services. So what I did is I also decided to create a list post with the best keyword research services, but I, I put a twist on it. So instead of just you know, picking random ones and listing them totally randomly, what I did is I actually did a real study. So I actually went and purchased every single one of the keyword research services that exists, and then I graded them and ranked them specifically with real data and ultimately real conclusions based on actually trying these services. So unlike some of these other ones that you'll see, I actually went and spent hard dollars on this for this experiment. And so the end result is that this asset becomes completely unique to me. No one else has this asset. No one else will have this asset. Now, of course, someone could go and create an even bigger study about keyword research services. That's certainly an option. But in reality, they would just basically be copying what I've already done, so it wouldn't be super unique. But for me, when I did this, it was unique. No one else had done it. So this is what you need to be thinking about when you're trying to create your content ass and you're trying to create a moat around your content because at the end of the day if anyone can just throw up a basic article and, and beat you then you don't have a moat right so what i want is i want to create content that's going to stand the test of time i want people to when they review this keyword like let's say one of my competitors wants to rank for this or anyone wants to rank for this I want them to look at my asset and say, oh man, like I don't know if we're gonna be able to replicate that based on our budget. Like that's what you want. You want them to say, man, that's gonna be difficult to beat. And if you're not creating that level of content, then you have an opportunity to really improve your performance by doing that. And this page has been ranking here for a long time now. I mean, if we look at the, the results, it popped up in 2021 and it's been, you know, in the top 10 now for quite some time. So, and actually even in the top, you know, top three or so even for a long time now. And I've done this over and over with many different assets. And it's always just taking the time to brainstorm, to think about how can we make something that's different than what's currently ranking while continuing to satisfy the intent of the keyword. And I did the same thing with the best CMS for SEO. This post has been ranking for a super long time. If we look floating, you know, for a long time, even longer than two years in the top five. Okay, it just sits in the top five and it's not incredibly deep and it's not incredibly long. But what it did is I took a unique angle where once again, I literally analyzed 10,000 keywords. It took a very long time to do, but the asset itself isn't super long. It's actually really short. And the funny part is on this asset, which I haven't touched, which I will probably be touching here soon, is I even have a little section here that talks about why this post is so short. And I'm just proving to people that you don't need to have this you know, 1800 words to rank, what you need to have is an angle that's unique. And if you hit an angle that's unique, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to acquire backlinks naturally, and it's gonna be easier to promote that asset. So even if you're not gonna get them naturally out of the gate, you can at least have an asset that's worth promoting, which then will lead to natural links. So if you look at this, this post has backlinks from some pretty solid sources. Some of them are natural, some of them are through outreach. But if you take a look, these are some solid links that are hitting this page. And so this is all just because I created something that's referenceable and I created some data to ultimately give someone something to link to, right? This has become a linkable asset. And so this is what you need to be thinking about when you're, when you're attacking keywords, especially ones that are a little more challenging, a little more competitive. You don't wanna just think about ranking in three months from now. You wanna think about how can I rank for three years? How can I rank for five years? And what would that look like? What would I have to do 
to rank for five years instead of just ranking in the short term. So when you change your mindset and focus on this moat strategy, like how can I build a moat around my content? And the way to do that is to do something that makes it difficult for competitors to replicate. So those are several of the best SEO practices for 2023. Just implement what I've showed you and you'll start seeing increases in your ranking. So if you like this video, please like it and subscribe because I have a ton of awesome new videos coming soon. And if you want to get even deeper SEO guidance and learn how to become a top 1% SEO expert, then you should join Gotcha SEO Academy, which is the number one SEO training program in the world. So I'll have a link in the description. And once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.